I am Todd Gross, the President and Chief Executive Officer of the Georgia Historical Society, and I have the honor of serving as the MC for this morning's ceremony. Over half a century ago, on March 16, 1960, a courageous and determined group of black students walked into the building behind me, then known as Levy's Department Store, and seated themselves at the white-only lunch counter of the Azalea Room. These students were determined to make America live up to its ideals of equality and freedom enshrined in the nation's founding documents, but at that time only available to certain people based on the color of their skin. Their courageous act launched a movement that changed forever this city, our state, and our nation. And today we have gathered to dedicate a historical marker that will share that story and interpret its meaning and its impact for generations to come. The marker we dedicate today is part of the Georgia Civil Rights Trail, a program of the Georgia Historical Society designed to encourage the public to visit sites and stand on the ground where one of the most important events in our nation's history unfolded. This marker will join nearly 30 others installed across the state by the Georgia Historical Society on a wide range of topics from the Civil Rights Movement, Primus King's challenge to the white primary in Columbus, the Moore's Ford lynching in Walton County, the murder of Lemuel Penn near Athens, the Albany Movement, and the Atlanta Student Movement. These historical markers and accompanying educational resources allow Georgia residents and visitors alike to better understand the dramatic events from that period between 1944 and 1973 that created the world we live in today. The marker that we dedicate this morning would not have been possible without many people and organizations, and on behalf of the Georgia Historical Society, I want to thank and recognize them for their support. And let me say, as a veteran, 25-year veteran, of historical marker dedications and ceremonies like this, I am not unmindful of the fact that someone always gets left out when you go through a list of people. So if I do not call your name, please, or your organization, please realize that it is not intentional. It is merely an oversight. Your presence here today means that you believe in this and that you are an important part of what's going on and I thank each and every one of you out there. First, I would like to thank our partner in state government, the Georgia Department of Economic Development, for its going support of the historical marker program in general, and in particular, for helping us to launch the Georgia Civil Rights Trail. We are also grateful for the support of the Hodge Foundation, represented today by Dr. Walter Evans and Dr. Paul Presley. Dr. Evans, where are you? <laughs> Please feel free to applaud at any time. The Hodge Foundation funded this marker and a series of short videos available on our website, georgiahistory.com, that explore ways for students to learn more about the civil rights movement. The Savannah College of Art and Design has also been an invaluable partner, and we appreciate so much the support and the encouragement of President Paula Wallace and the unflagging dedication of SCAD's Senior Director of External Affairs, Irina Tandy. Please give them a round of applause. And let me say again, I've, I've presided at a lot of historical market dedications. I don't think there's ever been one that's been this remarkable and this special. So, Paula, thank you. Your entire team, thank you. Really Someone said, how are you going to beat that? I said, I'm not going to sing and dance. I can <laughs> the Georgia Historical Society Board of Curators continues to support our institution's efforts to tell the whole story of Georgia, and we're fortunate to have three members of our board with us today, Ellen Volch, Reed Delaney, and Don Waters. Thank you for your leadership and your commitment to making Georgia a better place. I mentioned Paul Presley and Walter Evans, two former members of our board. I also want to mention Charles Elmore. Charles, where are you? You're, I know you're in the audience right here today. Here. Okay, there he is. <laughs> Charles, 
Charles Elmore, Dr. Elmore, was a member of our Board of Curators for many years. He also helped with a lot of other markers that you will see around town. And Charles, we're in your debt. Thank you so much you for so your much. support. Okay. We also owe a debt of gratitude to the mayor, aldermen, and employees of the city of Savannah for their support. They are represented today by Mayor Eddie Deloach. I specifically want to mention Bridget Liddy in the city's tourism management and ambassador, ambassadorship department for her assistance in creating the directional sign that you see here uh, on this post. Savannah city government has long been an important partner in helping to ensure that the stories of our past are available to the present generation. We are tremendously grateful to former mayor and civil rights leader and soldier, Mayor Edna Jackson, for her assistance in writing the text for this historical marker and for <laughs> and for her help in coordinating this event. Former Mayor Otis Johnson, from whom we will hear shortly, worked with the Georgia Historical Society on several important marker projects during his administration including historical markers for the beach institute the weeping time the largest slave sale in american history the birthplace of robert abbott founder of the chicago defender these historical markers and the one that the georgia historical society installed in madison square about special field order number 15 the so-called 40 acres and a mule order represent milestones along the road to the future that we shall all create together Finally, finally, let me recognize several individuals without whom there would be no historical marker. The courageous individuals who walked into this building 56 years ago, two of whom are with us today, Carolyn Quillen, Joan Tyson, and the family of Ernest Robinson. I want to give a special recognition to another honored guest today, Frances McLean, the widow of the late Malcolm McLean. <laughs> Malcolm McLean, as you may recall, as mayor during the 1960s, worked with another hero of the story, Mr. W.W. W. Long to end Jim Crow and segregation in our city. In his own way, Mayor McLean demonstrated just as much courage as anyone else in this story. When he stood up to the forces of reaction and moved our city forward towards the prosperity we enjoy today. Now, what these individuals, white and black, accomplished together half a century ago should be an inspiration and encouragement to us today as we meet the challenges of our own time and we work to create a more perfect union. It's also a reminder that the story of the civil rights movement, while it is at, the, at its heart an American, African American story, it's not just an African American story. It is an American story. Yes, yes. It's an essential part of the fabric of our nation's history, a story that defines who and what we are as Georgians and as Americans. It is a story that belongs to each and every one of us, regardless of our race. It should mean something to each and every one of us, regardless of our race. It's a story that is filled with significance for anyone who cares about this nation and our democratic way of life. In December of 1862, just as the Emancipation Proclamation was about to go into effect, President Abraham Lincoln observed, in giving freedom to the slave, we ensure freedom for the free. In giving freedom to the slave, we ensure freedom for the free. And similarly, it can be said that every time one American gains his or her civil rights, it strengthens the civil rights of all of us. Lincoln was speaking of the emancipation in the 1860s, but his words are equally applicable to the civil rights struggle a century later in the 1960s. And just as important, they are equally applicable today in 2016 to the challenges we face and the kinds of decisions we and our leaders are making 
that will create the world our children will inherit. Listen to what Lincoln said. Fellow citizens, we cannot escape history. We will be remembered in spite of ourselves. No personal significance or insignificance can spare one or another of us. The fiery trial through which we pass will light us down in honor or dishonor to the latest generation. We shall nobly save or meanly lose the last best hope of earth. The way is plain, peaceful, generous, and just. A way which, if followed, the world will forever applaud and God must forever bless. Thank you again for being here today and helping us to commemorate this important event in our nation's history. At this time, I would like to recognize my friend, the former mayor of Savannah, Dr. Otis Johnson, and ask him to come forward for a special presentation, after which we will unveil the historical moment. Good morning. They have me scripted. <laughs> and you know what's going to happen. <laughs> so I'm just going to get on with it. It is quite an honor uh, to be here today in the presence of all of these wonderful people, all of these citizens and friends of Savannah. In 1960, I was in the homeroom class of Carolyn and Joan. Miss E.P. Law's homeroom class. <laughs> and from the response I got, Many of you remember. Little <laughs> <laughs> dynamite. Joan and I was in school together from the first grade through graduation at Beach. We go a long way back. And Carolyn, as I said, was in our homeroom class, and we were in Miss Law's homeroom class from 10th grade through graduation. And so after Carolyn, Joan, and Robinson were arrested, um, and the date for their appearance in the police court was coming, like Richmond Ferguson said, we decided that we would all go down uh, to the police barracks, right where it is right now, and show our support. And sure enough, Mr. Douglas didn't think much of that. <laughs> but we were not very smart because when we left school, we returned to school and Mr. Douglas said, go home. <laughs> Some of you remember, go home and don't come back to you bring a parent. <laughs> and boy, you know how hard it was for us to go home <laughs> and, and, and tell our parents that we had been put out of school. Oh, have mercy. <laughs> but we, we, we got our, our parents to come and we were reinstated. Mm -hmm. I guess Mr. Douglas was doing what he had to do. Mm -hmm. We were doing what we had to do. All right. But we weren't small. Because if we were smart, we would have just played hooky. <laughs> <laughs> and we wouldn't have been put out of school. <laughs> we just would have been absent. <laughs> but, but we were, you know, we weren't that smart. <laughs> so that's a little story that I think our community, you know, really needs to know. Because there are a lot of us uh, who supported Carolyn and Joan and Ernest in what they were doing. And it just led from one thing to another. And you know the careers of 
those of us who were in that era just went on and on and on. So now I'll get to do what they wanted me. <laughs> it is with great honor. <laughs> that I present these replicas of the newly inaugurated Georgia Historical Marker to Carolyn Quillen Coleman, Joan Tyson Hall, and Ernest Robinson's daughter, Valerie and Velma. Mm. say that we constantly see a profile in courage from Dr. Ted Gross. Mm. Think about the Georgia Historical Society in 1960. <laughs> How many markers did we have honoring the contributions of African Americans to Georgia and to this area in 1960. None. And since Dr. Gross has taken the leadership of the Georgia Historical Society, he has taken both praise and flack for doing what he's doing. So I think we ought to give him a real Now I've done what I wasn't supposed to do, <laughs> and what I was supposed to do, and I thank you for your indulgence. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you so much. And on behalf of the people at the Georgia Historical Society who made this happen, I say thank you for that. Thank you. They worked very hard. Okay. We are now going to unveil the historical marker. And I would like for the two of you and the family to come forward and help us with this marker to unveil this. So this is Carolyn and Joan and Valerie and Velma. Please come forward. Let's pull, let's pull this out of the way if we could. Let's get it over to the side just a little bit. You want to take it all the way off? Yeah, that yeah. would be good. Look, he's not only a great speaker, he knows how to move poses, right? <laughs> Dual threat. Yeah. Please come. Come on up as close as you can get, because I'm going to ask you to help me pull this off. Oh, my. Yes. 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 Uh, let's pull it. Let's pull it. Oh, we got one more. Now let's pull it. Oh, we got one more. Let's pull it. Oh, oh. Yes. 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 And who is reading the historical mark? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think we have the text. There it is. Okay. Right Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> yeah. There we go. I'm going to turn it back around. Oh, I'm going to say want to see the mark. Okay. Uh, on March 16, 1960, black students, led by the NAACP Youth Council, staged sit ins at white only lunch counters in eight downtown stores. Three students, Carolyn Quillian, Ernest Robinson, and Joan Tyson were arrested in the Azalea Room here at Levy's Department Store, now Skaggs Gen Library. 
In response, African American leaders W. W. Law, Jose Williams, and Eugene Gadsden organized a nearly complete boycott of the city businesses and led voter registration drives that helped elect a moderate city government led by Mayor Malcolm McLean. Sit-ins and the boycott continued until 1961, when Savannah repealed its ordinance requiring segregated lunch counters, requiring segregated lunch counters. The boycott continued in all, until all facilities were des desegregated in October 1963 eight months before the passage of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. In 1964, Martin Luther King Jr. declared Savannah the most desegregated city south of the Mason-Dixon line. Erected by the Georgia Historical Society, the department, the Georgia Department of Economic Development, the Hodge Foundation, and Savannah College of Art and Design. Robinson, Ms. Quillen, thank you so much. It's not often that we get to go to a historical marker a dedication to Francis and actually have people who live through the event yeah. that are there when we dedicate the markers. So yeah. 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 Thank you, thank you all so much for your work. Thank you all for coming today. This concludes this ceremony. Thank you very much. Th this, this means so much to us because, first of all, it says that the people of Savannah appreciated what we did. Um, we knew that what we did was the beginning of the modern day civil rights movement in Savannah and we certainly hope it began to change lives in Savannah because it desegregated the lunch counters and just about every restaurant in the city so it was the beginning of much that happened after that including school desegregation. Well it's, it's always important for young people to know what happened prior to their having been born. Sometimes we think that the world began when we began, but this tells them that a lot happened before they came to make it possible for them to be where they are today. Our kids are attending desegregated schools. They think nothing of sitting in a restaurant eating a meal, but that was a big thing in that day. And finally, your thoughts of this. How many people came out? I am just so happy and pleased about the way Savannians have turned out came to support us in this event, and it says to me again that they appreciate what we did.